In this video, we shall discuss how to use the content aware field to remove things. And we shall also go ahead and discuss all its properties to give you a better understanding. My name is Gerald, and without wasting any time, let's begin. The first step is to make a selection of whatever we want to remove. And in this case, we want to take out this guy. So grab a selection tool of your choice. In this case, I'll be using the quick selection tool. Then make a rough selection around the subject. So since we are removing this guy, we should also select his shadow. So we can add his shadow to the selection by using the lasso tool. And make sure you hold the shift key while adding the shadow to the selection. The next step, we shall expand the selection by a few pixels so that it's not touching the main subject. So go ahead and click on select, modify, then click on expand. I'll expand it by about five pixels could be more or less depending on the photo you are using then click OK so as you can see the selection is not touching the subject we want it to be exactly like that so at this point we can now go ahead and open content aware field by clicking on edit and then click on content aware field so this is how the content aware field window looks like on this side of the window, you can see the image that we are working on. And to zoom in and out, you can press Ctrl and minus or Ctrl and plus. And this side of the window is the preview, all the result of whatever we have been working on. And you can also zoom it out by pressing Ctrl minus or pressing Ctrl plus. All you have to do is point where you want to zoom in or out. Then up here are the properties of the content aware field. So let's go through them one by one. We have the sampling area overlay. So when you tick show sampling area, look at this area in green, that is the sampling area. So we can decide to hide it or show it. Let's just leave that tick. Then we have its opacity. You can increase the opacity of the sampling area or decrease it. Then you can also change the color to, to your choice. I'll just leave it at green, the default. And the opacity, I'll leave it at 50. Then here it's telling you that the green is showing the sampling area. That is the area where Photoshop is sampling from. But you can also change it to excluded area. So the green will be showing the area that has been excluded from the sampling. But let's leave it at the default. Then next we have the sampling area options. The first one is auto. And right now we are using the auto sampling. And what auto sampling does is that it uses similar content around the fill area. Our fill area is this area that we have selected. So the auto sampling made a selection around the fill area. It looks at the areas that it thinks could be the best to fill the selection. And you can take a look at the result. It has not done a bad job filling. So that is what auto does. Then the next one is rectangular. So if you click on rectangular, it uses a rectangular region around the fill area, which is almost close to auto, but there is a small difference. The next up is custom, and custom allows you to sample manually. So when you click on custom, you'll have to use the brush tool to sample the areas that you think is the best to fill. Then also a dialog box pops up telling you exactly what I told you to do. So you can just go ahead and click OK. Then you'll have to use this brush tool to sample the areas that you think is the best to fill. So you can see we have made a sample on this area and this is the result, which is not so perfect. So I'll try to add more samples. By the way, if you select an area that you don't like and you want to subtract it, you can just change the brush from here and then subtract the areas that you don't want to include in the sampling. The next step, we have the fill settings. The first one is color adaptation. And color adaptation allows contrast and brightness to adapt for a better match. So we have default, high, very high. We shall try a few examples to show you how this works. But for now, let's leave it at default. Then we have rotation adaptation. This one allows rotation of the content for a better match. So you can choose low, medium, high, full. We shall also try a few examples to show you how this works. 
Then when you tick scale, it allows content resizing for a better match. Then mirror allows horizontal flip for a better match. Then also down here, we have the output settings. When you are done and you think you have done a good job, you can decide to output to current layer, which is a bad idea. You can output to a new layer because there are scenarios where you'll have to make some more changes for a perfect match. Or you can duplicate the layer, but we shall leave it at new layer. Then when you're done with all this, you can go ahead and click OK. So you can press Ctrl plus D to deselect. And you can see Photoshop has added a new layer. And that is the layer that we have been working on. If you hide it, it brings back the original. And this next example will help us explain how rotation adaptation works. And we shall attempt to remove this B. So let's just use the lasso tool and make a rough selection around the B. And let's not forget to select its shadow. Then go ahead and click on edit, then click on content aware. So we can decide to use manual sampling or auto sampling. Let me just go with auto sampling to save more time. So this is the result. So when we go to rotation adaptation, let's try low and see the result. That is not bad. Let's try medium and click OK. So you can see this is perfect. So that is exactly how rotation adaptation works. And whenever you are done and you feel like your results are okay, just go ahead and click OK. Then press Ctrl plus D to deselect. Now in this last example, we want to remove this bud. So using the lasso tool, make a selection around the bud. Then do the needful by going to edit, content aware. I'll use auto sampling for this and it has already taken off the bud, but you can see the results are not so perfect. So I can just go ahead and click on scale. Click OK. Wait for it. So you can see this is a lot better. And by the way, if you're still here with me, I do appreciate and the reason why I made this video is to give you a better understanding on the content aware feel because we shall be using it a lot in the upcoming videos. For example, I'll be making videos on how to remove people. And you know, when it comes to removing people, it depends on how the photo is. There are some photos which is so crowded. There are photos with complicated backgrounds. You can't use the content aware feel alone. You'll have to use the content aware field, then maybe use other tools in order to achieve your goal. So I wanted to give you a better understanding on the content aware field first, before we can start other videos that involves it. So thank you very much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Till next time.